If you're serious about playing the organ, you should invest just a little bit of money and buy some dedicated organ shoes. Shoes that you wear only when practicing and playing the organ. Would an athlete run a hundred yard dash barefoot? I don't think so. If you choose the right shoe, it can help improve your accuracy and hasten your development in pedal technique. There are some things to look for in a shoe. First of all, you want the sole to be somewhat rigid so that you can still feel a little bit, but some shoes are a little bit like bedroom slippers. This one's a little harder sole. And while I recommend leather for the sole of the shoe always because it slides over the pedals better, it's a matter of personal preference as to whether you want leather or rubber or neoprene or some other material on the heel. That's up to you. I like a leather heel and a leather sole. You want the width of the sole to be as uh, compact as possible. If you have a shoe with a lot of stitching and overhang, this makes the shoe wider and it will get you into a situation where you may clip notes at the pedal board that you might not clip if you had a little bit thinner and more compact width. The um, heel is very important. You need to have at least an inch high heel so that you can span over a pedal by playing a note here and a note here, for example, with that part of the shoe. You just need to have a, a lightweight shoe as well, one that's balanced. If I put my finger here about an inch in front of the heel, you can see that shoe is fairly well balanced. A lot of dancers' shoes are built this way. They're weighing as much in the front as the back. Now, you might not think that much of a shoe being balanced, but if you're practicing for four, six, or eight hours a day, that balanced shoe is going to help prolong your stamina and also be, it'll make it more likely that you will not have an injury. So organ shoes are all about your comfort. Please don't wear an organ shoe that cramps or puts a strain on your feet. Now going along with that, for comfort, one needs to determine their optimal bench height. And AGO, American Guild of Organists, has a document that specifies any number of dimensions that are recommended for organ consoles and included in there is a recommended bench height. It's 20 and a half inches above the top of middle E on the pedal board, plus or minus two inches either way. Now that's to accommodate for a variety of organists ranging from around five feet two inches to six feet four inches. If you're really small or short, the bench might not be low enough, even the way it is at its lowest position. You may have to have a little bit of that shaved off, an inch or two, and then add blocks underneath for others so that when they play, the bench can be restored to its normal height. Generally, the longer your legs, the higher your bench setting will be. Uh, my bench setting, for example, is AGO specification plus three quarters of an inch. Now, let's take a look at what is not a good bench height. Let's lower the bench all the way flat to its lowest setting. Well, here I am with the bench a bit too low. I have to make a conscious effort to keep my toes and my heels from depressing the pedals. They're resting, but I feel I have to pull up just slightly all the time to keep those feet from depressing the pedals directly underneath. And now I've cranked the bench at its top elevation and my legs and my feet are dangling in the air. I have absolutely no contact with the pedal with either toes or heels. This is definitely not going to work. Well, now that we've checked out our organ shoes, as well as our bench height and bench position, we're ready now 
to investigate and explore the world of organ peddling. Thank you.